Hi Cougars, I know how most of you love to play with Legos. So we're going to read the story or the biography of the man who created Legos. Remember that a biography is the story of someone's life written by somebody else. An autobiography is the story of a person's life written by that person. Our story is Lego Manufacturers, the Christensen family by Lee Slater and published by Checkerboard Library, an imprint of Abdo Publishing. Like all nonfiction books, an odd biography is one, we have a table of contents. We will also have a glossary, an itty bitty teeny weeny dictionary, and an index. This book, like some nonfiction books, also offers a timeline and websites that you can go look at to find more information about Legos. Chapter 1. A famous toy maker is born. Old Kirk Christensen was born on April 7, 1891, in the village of Vilskov, Denmark. He was the tenth child of Jens and Christine Christensen. The Christensens had little money. Jens worked on a nearby farm while Christine took care of the family. But the humble beginnings led to great success. Oh, we grew up to create the Lego Empire. Like most children in rural Denmark, Oh and his siblings worked very hard. They helped run the family farm. However, education was important to their parents. Jens and Christine wanted all of their children to learn to read and write. So at age six, Ole started going to school twice a week. When not in school, Ole tended livestock. To pass the time, he carved small wooden figures. These wooden carvings were some of his only toys. Ole never expected that he would become a famous toy maker. Chapter 2 Ole built his life. Old schooling ended when he was 14 years old. It was time for him to learn a trade. His older brother, Christian, was a carpenter. Jens and Christine decided that Ole would become Christian's apprentice. Ole worked alongside his brother for four years. In 1911, he was awarded a journeyman certificate. In the early 1900s, many young men in Denmark learned carpentry. This led to too many workers and not enough jobs. Ole had to leave Denmark to find work. He worked as a carpenter in Germany for a year before moving to Norway. During the four years he lived in Norway, he met and married Christine Sorensen. In 1916, Ole and Christine settled in Billund, Denmark. Ole used his savings to buy the Billund Carpentry Shop and Lumberyard. Ole's shop built homes, repaired items, and made furniture. Ole earned a reputation for quality work at an honest price. Meanwhile, he and Christine started a family. Between 1917 and 1920, they had three sons. Their names were Johannes, Carl George, and Gottfried. Fun fact. Ole and Christine's new home in Billund was only about nine miles from his childhood birthplace. Chapter 3 Life isn't always easy. Ole worked hard to provide for his family, but his business suffered during the Great Depression. The economy was bad, and jobs were scarce. People were building fewer homes and buying less furniture. As a result, Ole and his family almost went bankrupt. But Ole saw the parents were willing to sacrifice the money to bring their children joy. So he started building and selling durable wooden toys, and they sold well. He often accepted food as payment. 1932 tragedy struck. Christine died while giving birth to their fourth son, Gerhardt. 
always left to raise the boys on his own. That same year, 12-year-old Gottfried became his father's main assistant. Together, they made ironing boards, ladders, yo-yos, and wooden animals. In 1934, Ole decided it was time to create his own brand name. He started with the Danish phrase, le go. In English, this means play well. Ole combined the two words to create the name Lego. The Lego group was officially born. That same year, Ole married Sophie, Sophie Jorgensen, and in 1935, they had a daughter named Ulla. Ole's life was starting to become less of a challenge. Chapter 4, The First Lego Toys By 1936, the company was producing more than 40 different toys. The workshop employed a small group of carpenters. Ole's personal motto was, Only the best is good enough. Godfrey carved this on a sign and hung it in the workshop. Godfrey created many models for new toys. He and Ole drew patterns for the other carpenters to follow. The Lego toys were expensive, but they were built to last. Consumers were happy to pay a bit more for such high quality. In 1942, the Lego group factory and warehouse burned down. All the plans, materials, tools, models, and products were lost. Before Ole began rebuilding, he thought about the company's future. Homes and household products were not in high demand, but everyone loved Lego toys. O wanted to focus on these popular items. He decided that the new Lego group would make only toys. Fun fact. One of the most popular original Lego toys was a wooden duck on wheels. Chapter 5, Plastic Classics All of the original Lego toys were carved from wood, but in the mid-1940s, plastic became a new material for toy makers. Consumers were eager to buy the colorful plastic toys. In 1947, the Christensen family purchased an expensive injection molding machine. This new machine allowed them to mass produce plastic toys. At first, Ole's workers thought it was a strange idea. Then Ole showed them the plastic building blocks manufactured by a British toy company. The blocks could be put together and pulled apart. Ole asked his designers to create a mold for a similar toy. In 1949, Lego began manufacturing plastic building blocks. Lego's automatic binding bricks were the earliest versions of the Lego bricks we know today. All of the old sons eventually joined the family business. Gottfried was the managing director of the company. Carl was the, the director of plastic product manufacturing. Gerhard was the director of wood product manufacturing. And Johannes, was and Johannes was responsible for shipping and distribution. Toy companies still use injection molding machines to manufacture plastic toys to this day. Fun fact, today's Lego molds are very accurate. There are only 18 flawed pieces out of every 1 million produced. Chapter 6, Life of a Lego Brick. Lego no longer makes its product in a small workshop. Today's Lego bricks are manufactured all around the world. There are Lego group factories in many countries, including Denmark, Mexico, and the United States. The production of the Lego bricks is almost completely automated. First, trucks filled with colored plastic granules arrive at the factory. 
giant hoses suck up the granules and dump them into the huge metal silos. Pipes transport the granules into the injection molding machines. The molding machine heats the granules to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. The machine feeds the melted plastic into the molds. These are metal containers which the compartments are shaped like hollow Lego bricks. The machine uses pressure to accurately shape the bricks. The bricks cool for about 10 seconds and then they are ejected. A conveyor belt drops the finished Lego bricks into boxes. A robotic truck moves the boxes to the decoration area. Here, a printing machine stamps details onto the bricks. The next step is collecting the right pieces to make Lego packages. Boxes roll on conveyor belts underneath bins that hold different Lego bricks. The bins release a set number of, of Lego bricks into each box. Finally, humans take over to finish the job. Workers fold the boxes and will add instructions to each one. They check each box to make sure there are no mistakes. Chapter 7 A New Name and a New System in 1953, Lego automatic binding bricks were renamed Lego Mernston, or Lego bricks. The next year, Godfrey attended a toy fair in England. One buyer said that most of the toys didn't have any system, and the buyer wanted a group of similar toys that could be used together. Godfrey liked this idea, and the interlocking Lego bricks were the perfect product to use. In 1955, LEGO launched its system of play. The first product was called Town Plan No. 1. The base had been printed, make, the base had printed marking for, for streets and crosswalks. There were plastic peoples, trees, road signs, and cars. The instructions encouraged kids to create their own original towns. But the LEGO bricks didn't always stick well together. So Godfrey designed a better brick. It had three tubes instead of a hollow space. This new design was called a sudden tube blocking system. The successful new Lego brick was patented on January 28, 1958. Fun fact, there are more than 915 million ways to combine six Eight stud Lego bricks. Chapter 8 The Family Business. Old Kirk Christensen died on March 11, 1958. Godfrey became the company's new president. By then, Lego products were being sold throughout Europe. But Gottford was ready to expand. He started exporting Lego toys to Canada, Asia, Australia, Africa, and the United States. Gottford's leadership and the Lego system of play boosted the brand's success. Lego products became extremely successful around the world. In 1967, more than 18 million Lego sets were sold worldwide. During the 1970s, the first Lego minifigures were introduced, and in 1977, Lego launched its Ex Expert Builder series. These models used motors and gears to move. Theme sets, such as Lego Castle and Lego Space sets, were another first. Each generation of the family increased the company's success. The legacy continued when Gottfried's son, Kajel Kirk Christensen became company, company president in 1979. In 1963, Gottfried presented the company with 10 product characteristics. He wanted every toy product by Lego, by the Lego group, to offer these things. Number one, unlimited play potential. 
Number two, for girls and for boys. Number three, fun for every age. Four, year-round play. Five, healthy, quiet play. Six, long hours of play. Seven, development, imagination, creativity. Eight, the more Lego, the greater value. Nine, extra sets available. And ten, quality in every detail. Fun fact, a mistake on Kajel's birth certificate spelled his last name with a K. The Christensen's descendants have spelled their names with the with K Christensen ever since. Chapter 9, A True Game Changer Kajel led the company in many new directions. He founded the annual Lego Prize in 1985. This international award recognized efforts to help children. The company also sponsored international Lego building competitions. The first Lego World Cup was held in 1988. Under Kajel's leadership, Lego products started using new technology. Lego sets began including electric lights, motors, and sounds. The company released more and more products each year. The Lego group also opened Legoland theme parks, clothing stores, and a hotel. During this expansion, video games increased their popularity. Many kids became more interested in computers than building blocks. Lego competed with some computer games of its own, but the world of play was changing fast. By 2004, the Lego group was losing money. If the business didn't do something, it would go bankrupt. Kajel realized it was time for a drastic change. He stepped down as president and hired Jorgen Vig. Nunstorp to lead the company. Nunstorp was an expert at saving family business. For the first time in Lego history, someone outside the family was leading the way. Of the world's six Lego theme parks, Legoland Malaysia was the first one to open in Asia. Chapter 10, Rebuilding the Lego Brand. The Christensen family still owned the Lego group, but it was Northam's job to turn the company around. To do this, he had to manage cash flow. Cash flow refers to the movement of money through a company. Money entering a company is called income. Money leaving a company is called expenses. If more money leaves the company than comes in, the company fails to make a profit. A successful company takes in more money than it spends. Nordstrip analyzed the cost of making each Lego product. He eliminated products that cost too much or didn't sell well. For example, the Lego computer games were not very popular, and it would cost too much to improve these games. Old's vision was about quality, not quantity. But what would inspire kids to choose Lego over computer screens? Nordstrip invested a lot of the company's money in research. The Lego group needed to understand how modern kids played. That's where the Future Lab came in. Fun fact, the Lego bricks sold in 2012 could circle the world more than 18 times. Chapter 11, The Future Lab. The Future Lab is a group of about 50 Lego researchers, engineers, and designers. Its job is to invent new play experiences for children everywhere. Nordstrom says, it's about discovering what's obviously Lego but has never been seen before. Future lab researchers partner with universities and independent researchers. 
Together, they study current best-selling toys. They play with kids and talk to them about their likes and dislikes. Meanwhile, future lab designers research popular movies and computer games. They follow trendy fashions, magazines, and websites. They are always looking for inspirational ideas. The Future Lab holds a special meeting every year. Associates spend a week in the Mediterranean coast of Spain. The Future Lab employees bring research samples and plenty of imagination. They brainstorm, sketch, and design future products. They work as hard, but they also, it's all about play. Fun fact, in 2014, the Lego Movie was the highest grossing film in the United Kingdom. It was the fifth highest grossing film in the United States. Chapter 12, The Christensen Family Today. Ola's descendants are currently among the wealthiest people in Denmark. The family has come a long way from its humble farm beginnings. Old strong worth ethic has guided the Christiansons to great success. The Lego Group is owned by Kirk Bia, AS, and the Lego Foundation. Kirk Bia, AS, is the investment company of the Christiansen family. Some of its investments are in renewable energy. The Lego Group hopes to fully rely on renewable energy by 2020. The Lego Foundation is a charity. It use, uses play to improve children's education worldwide. The Christensen family is dedicated to making a positive difference in the world. Lego toys continue to inspire and delight children all over the world. And as O always said, only the best is good enough. Fun fact, Lego has been the Christensen family business for more than 75 years. The Lego group recycles 90% of its production waste. Fun fact, in 2000, Lego was named the Toy of the Century and by Fortune Magazine and the Toy Retailers Association. Here's the timeline. And the glossary or the itty bitty teeny weeny dictionary. and the index. See you soon, Cougars. Go create something world